Hello everyone, my name is Marianne. Welcome to my little country kitchen. And we are gonna be talking about pumpkin squash and gourds today. So I'm gonna show you my beautiful squashes that, or the seeds anyway, that I got. So these are all the seeds in different types and we're gonna be going over them. And I will show you um, all the different kinds that I have and how I've finally figured out and organized them. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and insert my charts to the side so you can take a screenshot. That way I kind of did the homework ahead of time for you. And then now we can start talking about um, the different kinds. So the first, okay, so first of all, the family is a, how do you say it? Q, Cucurbitaceae. Cucurbitaceae. So that means pumpkin squashes and gourds. And pumpkins are actually a type of berry. And there's about seven edible species out of 30. And so the first one we're gonna talk about is a mixta species. And if you saw this tiny little, this is called a baby boo pumpkin. Very perfect for this, for today. Today's Halloween, happy Halloween everyone. So uh, other types of mixed of pumpkins are like the dishpan pumpkin, the green stripe, the Illinois, the Jack B. Little, the orange stripe, the silver edge, the Weeby Little, so the other orange type of pumpkin, the baby one, or the baby bear. Those are like the three tiny baby ones. And then this one that I got, I was finally able to find one that I wanted, and it's called Kusha Green Striped. So this is a mixed type of pumpkin. And the idea is if I plant one of each of these, then they're not going to cross pollinate. At least from the research that I've done, that's what I've said. We're going to cross our fingers and hopefully that will be the case and figure it out next year. I can be your experiment. So let's get going. So the next one is Maxima. That's probably the one I have the most seeds of. And the ones that you probably recognize the most are the Blue Hubbard squash and the Pink Banana squash. Also a Sugar Pie pumpkin and a Jack-o'-lantern. I carved this at work one year. And if you guys want to know how ginormous these squash get, let me show you. This is a Blue Hubbard. Okay, I didn't grow this. I just dream of growing this. <coughs> that thing is 25 pounds. And I went to a store up north that I found. It's like a food storage store. And she was having an awesome sale of their squashes for only 75 cents a pound. So that was a great deal. And the other Maxima is a pink banana squash. <laughs> this is ginormous. This is about... I think this was 19 pounds, I believe. But anyway, and these have a lot of flesh. So they're not hollow like a typical pumpkin, say you would do for like a jack-o'-lantern or something like that. These have a lot of flesh and a lot of meat on it. So you're really getting a, a good bang for your buck. So the other type of Maxima pumpkins or squashes is a Guatemalan blue. Those are the ones I want to try or a candy roaster. So those look yummy too. So I can't decide which one should I do next year. Put it in the comments. Should I do the Guatemalan blue? I picked this one because my mom's from Guatemala. Or should I do the candy roaster? My best friend was named Candy. So anyway, help me pick. So I can't decide. Now the other types of ones are the silver bell. I'll find a picture for you because there's no picture of that one. And then the blue curry. And these seeds are just, um, they probably just died in blue. They don't grow that way. <laughs> At least that's my guesstimating. Okay, this is the Lakota. It's a cute little guy. And then this is a Hopi gray squash. This is a sweet meat. Oh, yeah, that's what they look like. So you can get that from in my gardener too. I'm gonna 
put the extras on here actually. And then a buttercup squash. Looks like I planted that, but that I'm pretty sure last year they died. Then this is a Lakota squash. And so these botanical interest flaps are my favorite because they tell you it's a winter squash. It, the name of it is a Lakota and it's a Cucurbitae maxima. It says everything right on the package. So I, I didn't know what these meant before. So after I researched them, the Cucurbitae is all the species. So all we're talking about all Cucurbitae um, and that is the genus. And then the species is the maxima and that is the different species. So we talked about mix before, now we're talking about maxima. And so these are different species that we're talking about. And then there's all different cultivar types. So where was I? Okay, so this Lakota is a different cultivar type. And this is also a maxima. And this is called, also known as the um, Zapalito de Tronco. So really dark green. So this is an Argentinian heirloom. This is good for winter and summer squash. And they also call it the avocado squash. So this looks like fun. And then there is the red curry squash. And that's a winter squash. And then this is a Burgess buttercup squash. Maybe I already talked about that one. Okay, the next species we're going to talk about is called Moschata, M-O-S-C-H-A-T-A. You say it however you want. <laughs> okay, so the most typical ones that we see are, of course, are the butternut, and that's the Waltham. You can see find these everywhere in stores, especially around this time of year. And the ones I want to do is called a Seminole Pumpkin. I'm, I'll find a picture for you. And there's also Long Island cheese. And then a honey nut squash is that one. So this is actually a baby of the butternut and the buttercup. And so this is an heirloom variety. And so it is different than um, the other one from the Maxima. So I could technically grow both of these if I wanted to. But this one has more beta carotene. It, you can roast it. You can saute it. You can puree it. Um, put it in soups and stews. You can braise it. And it's even really awesome for dessert. So this is like an all-around type of squash. But they are small. They are about four to five inches long. So Then this one, also known as a tromboncino, ramicante. Uh, I, I don't know. It's also a summer and winter. And it's summer if you um, pick it young. And it can also be a great winter squash. So Jess, our friend from Roots and Refuge, grows these a lot. So she <laughs> makes me want to grow the fun stuff, right? Okay, so on to the next species, which is the Curcurbida pepo. And these are probably the ones that you're more familiar with, like the yellow straight neck squash. There's also the crook, yellow crooked neck squash. And, of course, the Black Beauty Zucchini. And Spaghetti Squash. My husband, those are my husband's favorites. So, again, if, if you go to Botanical Interest, so if you're very brand new in learning seeds or anything like that, I recommend even just going to Botanical Interest website. They do have sales every now and then if you pay attention or listen to Jess and she'll let you know when. Um... But yeah, this was only two bucks for three grams of seeds. Anyway, but it tells you the most information. It's a winter squash. It's spaghetti. Cucurbita pepo is the name. And it's also called a gold string melon. Spaghetti squash is unique among winter squashes. When cooked, the flesh falls away from the shell in strands like spaghetti. It retains a tender yet al dente texture, savory flavor that is delicious and low calorie with a simple bit of butter and salt. Each plant can yield five to seven squash. This packet sews up to seven mounds, and it tells you when to sew outside, which is recommended one to two weeks after your last frost date, 
with the soil temperature of 70 degrees to 85 degrees Fahrenheit and not recommend to start indoors unless you have a really short season, growing season. And it even shows you what the seedling image looks like. It um, days to emerge, the seed depth, the seed spacing, the mound, the thinning, and the maturity. It takes about 100 days to mature. So all of that information on how to grow it is right on the package. Like Botanical Interest is my absolute favorite package because it tells you so much. Okay. And this is the scallop, the patty pan squash, also known as a scallop. Sometimes you see these around this time of year. People like getting them for decorative, but they are good. Um, harvest, old fashioned, let's see. Display in a pretty bowl. I don't know, has anybody ever tasted these? What do they taste like? I'm curious. Maybe they're just pretty to look at, right? Then this one is the Zucchini Long White of Palermo. I just thought that was a cool zucchini. He looks kind of like an albino zucchini. <laughs> and then this one is a honey boat. And they say sprinkling with cinnamon sugar makes really awesome treat for a chilly autumn day. This squash is delectably sweet and has a nutty flavor and high in calcium, potassium, folate, and vitamin A and C. Mm. Now I want some. <laughs> Then there's the gray zucchini. Oh, another black beauty. Step to the side. And then these cute little zucchini rounds. I'm really the only one in my family that likes zucchini. My my son does too, but he moved out. So um, that would be like a cute little one serving for me. That would be good. I could probably eat a couple of them actually. And the last one is the golden ace acorn squash. And that's all in the Peppo family. Okay, the next family is called C. Fissifolia? I don't know how to say it, but whatever. I don't have any of those. I wasn't able to find them, but the types that I want to find are Asian pumpkin, a black seed squash, a chilacayote, a fig leaf gourd, or a malabar gourd, a pie melon, a Victoria, a ala coyote, and like the these are nodes, they grow roots and they can propagate really easy. So that's pretty cool. But I wanted this kind because they're really good for, for lowering blood sugar. My husband is diabetic, but I couldn't find them anywhere. If you guys know how to find any of these kinds that I just said in the Ficifola species, um, let me know and type it in the thingamajig below. That would be really awesome. And then I also have... So these are separate. These are not of the other five species that we just talked about. So this one is a Kentucky filled heirloom pumpkin and it's gigantic. Look how big that is. And it's the species of a mellow pepo. So I'm thinking it kind of got um, bred because it is an heirloom. So, and they're generally 10 to 15 pounds. So we'll see, that would be fun. So if I could grill that one too. And then this is a loofa gourd. And loofas are all in their own category. And so they don't pollinate with any of these because they're actually in a different genus. So you can grow one of each of these. And then there's also a legendinaria gourd or calabash a dipper gourd i just thought that was fun if i could actually make a spoon out of the squash that would be fun to do or just like make my own ladle wouldn't that be fun anyway i just thought that would be awesome so those are all my squashes seeds that i have i'm so excited for next year what are you gonna plant next year and you guys have a happy halloween okay bye Oh. What are you doing up there? What you doing? Get down, Gingy. You're not getting the butter. No. Get down. Not Poppy, Ginger. Look up.
whatever. You're not the boss of me. She wants to. <laughs> and check out this other video that you might like too. And thanks for joining me.